ruckus. So, we started our new discussion on how to spread the gospel. Last week, we went over a method of spreading the gospel using an additional tool. Now, we're going to get into it, man. We're about to break down these scriptures. And guess what we're talking about today? Why is it important to spread the gospel? We're going to break it down according to God's plan. So get your pen, get your pad, get your Bible. Because guess what? We're about to jump into this right now. I am his humble servant, and this is Straight Word, the Bible study series where we get straight into biblical topics without a lot of the unnecessary fluff and distraction. We're jumping straight into the word on this one. So we have started the discussion of how to spread the gospel. And we talked about a, a different tool that we can use, which there are many, many tools that make spreading the gospel easy. But why is it important to spread the gospel anyway? I think first we have to understand what God's plan is and why we should be spreading the gospel for us to really begin to make it a lifestyle of our own. So we're about to jump into some scripture. Today, we're getting into a lot of scripture. So we're going in back to back with it. And we're going to see what was God's plan from creation and what does the Bible tell us is the plan all the way from Genesis to Revelation. And what does it have to do with us spreading the gospel? Man, let's jump right in. Get ready, because here we go. We're starting off in Genesis. So turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. We'll look at verse 27 and 28. Which says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish in the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every th living thing that moveth upon the earth. So, let's, let's divide this up. We're going to say, who is God talking to, and what is God telling them to do? Here, God is talking to mankind, who he created in his image. What is God telling mankind to do? To go and multiply and replenish the earth. To spread his image or spread the good news of him. Right? Man was made in this image. Multiply that image. Okay. Let's jump in. Genesis chapter 6 verse number 5. It reads. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of his thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So we know Adam and Eve fell to sin. Now that sin was introduced in the world. Now sin is being multiplied and spread in the earth. And we see it gets to a very big point in Genesis chapter 6 where men are thinking evil continuously. Let's go. Genesis chapter 8, 16 through 17. There it reads, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may be breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. Once again, God is telling someone what? To multiply on the earth. God is telling this to Noah. After he wipes all of the um, evil uh, 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 from the earth with the flood. And saves only Noah and his family and the animals on the ark. So what is God telling Noah in this instance? Be fruitful. Multiply. Go multiply my image across the earth. Spread the gospel. Spread the good news of me. Let's keep going. 
Genesis chapter 11, verse number 4. There it reads, And they said, Go, to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach up unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So what's happening? Evil has entered into the hearts of men again. Sin has entered in again. And instead of God's good news or God's image being spread across the earth, now men have decided, guess what? We want our name to be spread. We want to make a name for us. And we don't want to be spread across the earth and scattered. We want to stay in this one spot. Well, we know what happened. This is a, this is a story of the Tower of Babel. And God, at this point, decides what? I'm going to confuse the language of the men who don't want my will to be done. And guess what? When they tried to stay in one spot, God scattered them um, amongst the earth anyway. All right, so follow me. Thus far, we have God telling man to spread his image, his gospel, his good news across the earth. And we have men trying not to do so because of their sinful nature. So let's keep going. Let's talk about nations because nations were created out of the Tower of Babel. You know, different languages and different uh, cultures came out of that instance. So what did God do to deal with nations? Let's look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. There it reads, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto him above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So God chose a specific nation. This is talking about Israel. So God was going to use Israel to be the leaders of all other nations. He wanted Israel. Israel, you follow me. You spread my name. You, you multiply my image to these other nations and show them how to follow me. But, of course, we know that Israel didn't do that correctly. So what happens? We need somebody else to hit the scene and help us with this situation to show us how to do it. So Jesus himself hits the scene and he has his 12 disciples. What does he tell them to do? Let's look at it. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. It reads, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teach all nations. What are we teaching them? About the gospel, about the good news of God, about his name, name which is his character. So from the beginning, from Adam and Eve, God is trying to spread his character, his good news, his, his name to all of the earth. The plan never changed. We even remember, if you uh, can recall, we've gone over Matthew chapter 24 a lot of times a straight word. And what does Jesus tell us is gonna happen in Matthew chapter 24? As he goes over the signs of the end time, he says, the end is not gonna come until the gospel is spread to every corner of the earth. Revelation also tells us about the same thing, the gospel being spread to all corners of the earth. So what we're seeing is a repeated theme. Since the beginning, God wanted his name, which is his character, his goodness, his likeness, the image of him to be spread to all of the earth, that he may get the glory out of all of the earth. Since sin entered into mankind, we see that there is a fight against that man's sinful nature it, it goes against god's nature it goes against wanting to spread his image and his good news to the earth so what happens when we as believers uh we fail to realize the importance of spreading the gospel well let's take a look at an example turn me to acts chapter 1 verse 8 there it reads but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Here in Acts, we have Jesus telling his disciples 
the Holy Spirit is going to follow you and the Holy Spirit is going to allow you to spread the gospel once again. And as he tells them what's going to happen, we can see that they're going to begin to spread the gospel where they live. Then they're going to go into the city around them. Then they're going to go a little bit further. And then guess what it says? Until you get to the uttermost parts of the earth. So the gospel is going to spread to the earth. God's plan from the beginning to the end. But if we look at Acts, we don't really see a record of this occurring uh, or, or them being able to fulfill what Jesus told them is going to happen right before he left the earth. It's not up until we get to a particular point in Acts that we see this being carried out. And as I studied through Acts, I didn't see any evidence of these men doing this before this time. Now, if you did, drop a comment below and we could talk about that too. But let's take a look at what happens in Acts chapter 8, verse number 1. It reads, and Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So what is going on here? If we think about it, the disciples that Jesus was bringing up in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 are the same apostles that we see being spoken of in Acts chapter 8 verse 1. But it shows here that the move that actually allowed the gospel to be spread since the disciples themselves didn't carry that out up until this point. It came through persecution. Think about the same thing that happened to those in the Tower of Babel. They did not want to fulfill God's will. They did not want to spread God's character and image and God's good news of his fulfillment among the earth. So God allowed something to happen against their will to scatter them anyway. The disciples we see here did not do the same thing. And guess what? Persecution came. And through persecution, they were spread anyway. So now we have disciples in Acts chapter 8 verse 1 fulfilling the very thing that Jesus said was going to happen by the Holy Spirit. So what we can see from this is if we don't move according to God's will, we're going to move according to God's will. Like, you can get with it <laughs> or you can allow God to do it. God's will is for the gospel to be spread to the four corners of the earth. We as believers have been already given the great commission. Once you're saved, you signed up for this. So spreading the gospel, and I went through all of those scriptures so we can see God's plan never changed. But spreading the gospel is simply a mandate, not an option. So as we discuss how to spread the gospel, we have to know the why. And the why is because it's God's will and it's our purpose to do so. Now, you can either do so willingly or you can force God's hand. And guess what? We'll be spread on the four corners of the earth and he's still going to get the glory anyway. So why not? Let's join in and let's learn how to do this willingly and effectively. Man, I'm so glad we could go through those scriptures because it shows us that God's plan was the same from the beginning and will be the same until the end. And it will be fulfilled in the end according to scripture and according to his word. Man, let's say a quick prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to see and to understand that your will will be done. Your gospel, your good news, your name, your character, the image of you will be spread, spread across the earth, dear Father. And we are thankful that you are allowing us to take part in that and to be vessels to fulfill that out. Dear Father, we want to pray as we continue to study that the Holy Spirit lead and guide us, that we can always get the correct interpretation of the word and hear what you are saying to us in today's time. 
Give us the strength and the boldness to carry out your word and your will, even to spread the gospel. Show us how to do so effectively. Uh, give us the strength to do so even facing the adversity. Give us the boldness to do so even when it feels awkward. These things we ask and pray in Yahshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. It is done. Man, I'm glad we could get to the why. Why should we spread the gospel? Next week, we're going to jump into some more um, ways of spreading the gospel. And we're going to look at some scriptures to back that up, of course. And we're going to look at examples from the scripture of how the gospel spread in biblical times. How can we model that in our time? <laughs> Man, I'm excited about that. So we'll jump right back into it next week. But until, until next week, always remember, study the word for yourself so you can get the straight word with no chase.